Hello Libra and welcome to your 2023 annual Astro Clock Forecast. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and for a few years I've been doing Astro Clocks. Recently, I asked a question to the community if you still wanted us to do Astro Clocks for 2023, and the response was a resounding yes. So I'm delighted to be doing it here again, and I also want to tell you that I'll be running a workshop about the Astro Clock and this is going to be in-depth technique plus an additional method uh, that I don't talk about on the channel and the techniques in the workshop are well beyond what we do uh, in this uh, in this forecast so I'll um, I'll put a link here and below and also sign up to the email list so that you get updates I'm really excited about this and I hope you'll be as excited so Libra let's do your 2023 forecast I've got my deck it is shuffled it always is between readings I just like to do a bit of a hand over hand to sort of resonate with you with your reading and we are ready to draw your astro clock let's see what is ahead for you this year okay Libra here is your astro clock as you can see we've got all the cards on the table I'm making sure everything is in view and having all the cards mean that we get well all of them we get the challenging cards the positive cards the travel cards all of them are on the table what's going to make this unique is the different combinations and the order of these combinations before we get into the month by month forecast Libra I like to get a, an overall orientation of the spread I like to get a sense of which cards are where to sort of see like a general energy I like to start with looking for the challenging cards and I see that there's the whip cross and tower uh, in December it's really the whip that is the most challenging card and um, oops that's not really in view here we go and uh, the cross is also a little bit challenging especially when there are challenging cards nearby this is going to be an interesting combination a little bit special I'm looking for the other ones the scythe can be negative but with the star it is not we have the clouds and mouse together but there's also the flowers which can help overcome this a little bit and by themselves the clouds and mouse are not very challenging the coffin is not necessarily challenging what about the snake the snake comes with the letters so this is about I would say secrecy again perhaps not all that uh, challenging and there's the fox nearby this is interesting and it's been so consistent across the astro clocks uh, this year so far. What I'm seeing is that whereas normally there are two to three challenging months in the year, this year across almost every sign I've come across so far, there aren't that many. There's one or two. Um, what's happening is that the challenging cards are showing up with positive cards in such a way that the positive card helps overcome uh, to some extent at least the challenges of the challenging card or the combination just means something else so it's looking like 2023 is going to be a really positive year for most of us and there's not going to be as many challenges as we're used to seeing in our astro clocks uh, so that is really interesting now the positive cards we've got the sun the star in here the flowers in here uh, the clover is lovely and what about uh, the keys in here there's lots of Lenormand uh, positive cards in Lenormand so we're going to see them in a lot of places how about travel cards this could be a travel combination and this could be a change combination it's interesting they come next to each other we've got the rider and road this can also be a trip maybe a short one but still a trip the stork is about changes and the ship is the main card of travel and we see it here in October relationships are of course they're gonna figure um, we've got June we've got November and possibly uh, with the April cards uh, but otherwise I'm not seeing so far or as it stands a strong emphasis on relationships for you Libra this year what about work and money where is the lily? Where's the lily? Hello, lily. There we are. In August. Um, uh, that's, that's interesting because it figures with the fox and this too can be about work. And we've got a really nice combination here with the fish. This is looking really good for your finances. Okay, so Libra, with this overview, let's now get into the monthly month, month to month forecast. As you might have noticed, I start dealing the cards at December 
at midnight, but I actually start reading at one o'clock here and I do January all the way to December. So let's go ahead. Uh, January has the flowers, clouds, and mouse. So like we said, the mouse and, and clouds are a little bit challenging. Uh, here we're looking at doubts, hesitation, in relationships it can be a bit of mistrust, uh, but we have the flowers, so that helps alleviate a little bit um, the energies or the impact of the clouds and mouse. And what I'm going to suggest is that I think you're prone to feeling doubtful, but the flowers asks you to, to see things with a bit more optimism. So don't get overwhelmed or, you know, just indulge too much in these negative thoughts. There's no need. Uh, there is a silver lining and you have good reason to try to look for the positive uh, in this situation. Now, we're going to see this across all the triplets, uh, Libra, but these are short um, these are short lines for each of the months and what's going to happen is that when we get to the monthly forecast we're going to get into more details uh, about each one uh, so the these cards they don't really tell us in what area this is happening whether it's on the job for example or with people uh, but when we get to the monthly forecast we'll, we'll get more details about this february now here's a powerful momentum moment we've got the uh, Scython house and this is a very straightforward combination Libra as I'm sure you can surmise it points to a house change it can uh, point to a move it can point to the idea of breaking away from a place if you live with someone like if you share a space you could leave or they could leave or there could be other sorts of changes um, and it's pretty radical because the scythe is in the middle and with the house it has that clear uh, suggestion but the star is one of the brightest cards of the deck it's all about wish fulfillment and happiness so you could be actually looking forward to this change and now there's an opportunity to move and change things around the house can also point to the job by reference to your team on the job and again you could be breaking away or making other exciting changes in your work life and the same dynamic is going to apply in any context of your life but the house really brings into focus the idea of your closer circle, your home, and your base. March, we have also changed cards in March. We have uh, the key, uh, the coffin, and the mountain. So the coffin is a clear card of endings, and uh, the key is a bit like the star relative to the scythe. It is a welcome ending. And with the mountain, we could be looking at a place abroad, or you could be traveling, um, and it can also suggest an ending to what might have been a situation that is stuck. Uh, so the March cards follow pretty well uh, the February cards, and so it's very clear that between February and March, we're looking at a change and a, a pretty sharp and clear ending. And not only that, but this is a welcome ending, and it's something that you're actually looking forward to. It's also possible that with the key coffin and mountain, you've completed something, you've achieved it, you've reached the top as it were, and now you're ready to close it off and move into a new beginning. And guess what? We have the child in April. So this is really strong and this is very uh, consistent and uh, really the story is, is uh, coherent. The child is the card of beginnings and we see it after these cards. So clearly the unfolding is happening the sun is one of the brightest cards and the garden points to a community or an environment so you're moving to a new place and in april we see that you arrive at this new place uh, the sun suggests this is very happy and obviously this is what you want and this is in very good alignment perfect alignment with february and march so Libra, it's going to be hard not to see this, but between February and April, you're looking at a major change and moving to a new place. Now, this can be a new job, a new home. It can be another environment that you're changing. It could be a social group. It really just depends on, on your life situation. But the change is there, very clearly there, and it's a happy one. Moving on to May, we have the friendship card. We have the dog. 
the rider is also helpful and we've got the road i really think here you could get help you could get support people come into the picture and uh, there is like a, a forward movement that ensues so i think getting help is going to enable you to move forward libra it's a good idea to accept help or to seek help and also give and take so if you are to offer help then that too works uh, the cards are also social here mainly the dog with the rider this can mean a visitor it can mean going some places with some people and it could also mean getting to know people uh, the thing about the road is that it's a little bit open-ended it's not really great for a commitment let's say uh, but it's really good for keeping options open and exploring so with the dog and rider you could be looking at meeting new people um, talking to different people exploring different types uh, you know maybe this is something you're doing for your work or, or for your social life so these are uh, social cards that invite you to communicate, interact, and also because of the road, I suggest you keep things light and um, you know keep things also open and keep an open mind as you meet different people. So that's a really nice, uh, easygoing month. In June, we also have the relationship aspect. We have both the ring and the woman. Clearly, this focuses on a specific person. Generally, that's what it does. And the woman can be anyone, really, but um, it's typically someone who's pretty close to you or pretty important to you. And uh, with the tree and ring, this is a solid relationship. Again, I'm seeing this idea of support, a bit like the rider. You get help, you get support. And I think there's a, a good sense of security here in this connection. Now again, I can't really tell from these cards if this is about your work or you know some other re relationship um, in your life. Um, so May, June, there's a focus on relationships. There is a bit of a contrast between the two though. These cards are open-ended, these cards are more committed. So it's possible that between May and June you meet someone and you know at first you're getting to know them, being friends with them, and then in June things become more serious or you know there's a, a deeper interest that is in the making. That's certainly nice if you're single, uh, but when it comes to if you're already in a relationship Libra then they can sort of stand alone. Um, where May is focused on just you know being with people and networking and June is more focused on your personal relationships. Moving on to July. This is a lovely combination. We have the Storkin book and the Clover. So the book is normally closed points to mysteries and secrets but with the stork there's a shake up here probably opens the book I like to see it on the other side of the book so in this order uh, in order to suggest the opening but I, I can still you know th think that uh, there's a revelation especially because of the lovely clover at the end of the line this is definitely good news it can be unexpected because of the chance factor that the clover brings um, but it could be welcome news regardless and I also think that there is a, a bit of a green light here that uh, kicks things into motion um, in contrast with June the tree is a little bit more settled it's a bit more patient it's slower and the stork is faster so it's possible that in June you were waiting on feedback waiting on someone to come around and in July they do but they can also be independent uh, events this combination is also good for creativity teaching learning uh, researching you know all of the ideas that could be associated with the book uh, you know are highlighted here and there are good things uh, that come through so this is an exciting combination Moving on to August, we have the fox, heart, and lily. Now, both the fox and the heart can be associated with work, especially jobs. Uh, so when they figure together, this theme likely comes through. Sometimes the uh, fox and heart points to someone who is half-hearted, and I have to say often. But because of the lily, I think the combination changes and it's really focusing on your work. In this sense, the heart is actually a good card because you could be feeling good on the job, you could be pursuing the things you want. Uh, but I, I'm still going to be a bit, you know, cautious about the fox. I'm going to suggest you do your part, you do things right, you keep uh, working, uh, you know, within within your role. Uh, the fox is really good with this. It's very good at being disciplined, at uh, finishing what it starts, um, meeting expectations. You know, it's a disciplined character, even though it can be a little bit self-interested and sometimes a trickster. Now, what's interesting is September. September is bringing an offer. We have the moon and letter, and this is the combination 
of an offer or a proposal. Uh, the thing about the snake is that it asks you to keep it to yourself. So at this time, you get an offer, but you don't tell people about it. Now, the reason I'm thinking about an offer is because of the job cards before. What I'm thinking here is that Yes, you like your job and you know, you're, you're doing your part. The fox can still be a bit reserved about some things and the snake even more so. So when we see these two combinations next to each other, I feel that you could be you know, doing what you need to do on the job, but you're also waiting for an offer. And it probably comes through here in September. However, you do not yet act on it. That is one clear scenario that can come through these cards. If you don't work or you know you, it's, uh, you don't have a job and maybe you live life differently, which is perfectly fine, um, you could still get some news. And it's also something that you keep under your hat. Now, another way we can read the snake in this context is in the sense of um, the news could be misleading or there can be some hidden aspects and you need to be generally cautious. So whatever communication or paperwork, documents, you know, anything that could be represented by the letter comes through this month, really any month, but it's highlighted here. Um, you wanna be careful of what you read. You wanna make sure you understand everything. And I would certainly advise against rushing to say yes or no. Take it away and sort of chew on it understand what it is about before you do anything about it. So these are, these are okay combinations, you know, they're sort of quieter. Um, and, uh, you know, just make sure you are, you know, you handle things with discretion. Moving on to October, we have a very beautiful month. We have the fish, ship and anchor. The fish is the card of money. The ship is also good for business and the anchor after the ship suggests the idea of arrival. Um, so there is good progress when it comes to your finances. And of course this can be your work um, or it could just be your finances in another way, but the work element comes through um, well from building on the previous months. So, you know, you see how the progression goes. You're sort of at your job, you do what you need to do. You get an offer, you don't act on it just yet. And then October, it looks like you act on it and you move or you arrive uh, to this new job. Um, so that is a, a very clear scenario that can come through these cards. And of course, there are other scenarios and it's gonna depend on your specifics. But in all cases, October looks really good for money, for business, uh, for landing in a good place. Maybe you're traveling and uh, you're looking at uh, a different location. You could find yourself, as it were, uh, because of the anchor. And uh, definitely cards that encourage you to pursue your ambitions and to go for it. So these are some really bright cards that bring um, a lot of action and movement, especially following the quieter uh, two months before it. Now, November, we have the man, bear, and bird, or it's actually bird, bear, and man. Libra, I think a manager can be in the picture here. Continuing with the, the job, the work uh, scenario here, uh, in your new job or in this situation here, there is uh, someone in a position of power uh, that comes into the picture. Now, the bird is okay. It can cause a bit of anxiety. This person can be a little bit dominant, I feel, and this could cause you a bit of nervousness. Maybe you're trying to prove yourself to him or, you know, um, you know, as you work in this, in this job or in this uh, environment. Um, the combination can also suggest conversations and negotiations with this person. And uh, it can also mean that this person is supportive because the bear tends to be protective. And even if the bird is a little bit um, chattery and causes a bit of nervousness, the bear is still solid and it can mean that this is someone you can have a conversation with. Uh, so that is one way we could look at the cards. In another sense, it can represent any relationship like outside of the job but the bear remains a dominant card a powerful card so this is someone who has quite a bit of importance or maybe it's it's someone you you look up to in some way or another or perhaps uh, he's influential in one way or another in all cases the bird suggests that a conversation may be due and again I can't tell from these cards what the conversation is about uh, but when we get to the monthly forecast and that's going to be later on next year uh, we'll get into these details now we wrap up with december so december 
is your most challenging month because of the whip but also because the other cards are not so strongly positive that it, they can overwhelm the whip th this much. The whip is a card of challenge and conflicts but in this combination this is an interesting one. We have the cross in the in the middle and the cross has to do with life lessons. It tends to be a more spiritual card and the tower also has a bit of that element. Um, when I see the whip and cross together, I read them as suggesting regret and possibly a bit of pain. And with the tower here, there can be a reference to the past. So here in December, Libra, you could come face to face with an issue, uh, probably that is from the past or has been long standing, and it's time to resolve it. I think it's a bit of a painful process, but it sounds like it's an important part of what you need to do to sort of heal and grow and overcome and all of that good stuff. Uh, but it really brings into focus this life lesson and, um, and uh, you know, releasing the past. Now, I have to say it's a bit of a independent kind of uh, triplet in the context of everything else. It shows up like this in December um, and uh, it, it brings into focus this, uh, this idea of, uh, of a painful episode or some kind of regret or an issue from the past that you need to work through. I can't really tie it with the previous cards. I really feel it, it seems to be a standalone card. But what I can say is, you know, it figures in December and I want to say this Libra, you know, if you've been postponing doing the work, you know, or looking at some things squarely, it's going to catch up with you at some point and it looks like it can catch up with you uh, by December. Now I'm not saying you have to try to deal with these issues uh, at another time. Um, it's, it's a good idea to do this, but you also have a process and, you know, life is going to unfold for you in certain ways and you'll be called to do things at different times. Uh, so in your astro clock, this processing of this issue shows up in December. But if you're aware of it now, anytime, you know, start thinking about these things. It is never too late and it's never too early to to look at these things and to process your regrets or, you know, the painful, the painful episodes. And I am glad that such a combination shows up in your cards because it's an important reminder that it's not just about the job and, you know, the people and all of that. It's about you and, you know, what you carry within you. Uh, so, so it's actually a, a good message. I, I like these combinations because I, I like to do the work and I hope you do too. So Libra, exciting astro clock. We have, we have like chunks of, we have groups of triplets that focus around certain themes. And I think the loudest one or what might be the most important one is the February to April energy. This, I mean, unmistakable message of change and a new beginning. And not only that, but one that is desired and that leads to fulfillment. So very clear between February and April. We have some relationships elements here between May and June. They build up to something nice. Um, and here we have an opportunity for change. You know, and I think this is the opportunity that leads to the change that we see in October. So it's very possible that here in July, you know, you got an opportunity for change, but because of the book in Clover, you sort of keep it to yourself a bit like with the September cards until October when you're able to kick off in your adventure uh, and move and make a change. And like I said, I felt the, the logic of the cards works really well in the context of work, but it can still work in, in other contexts as well. And then we have uh, this important person here and then we wrap up with uh, with um, working through some some issues. So overall Libra this is looking like um, uh, a powerful year where there's a, a moment uh, of change here and uh, I think this is the it sounds like the loudest part of your year and then the other things that happen are also pretty significant but I don't feel they're as uh, loud and uh, explicit if you like as the February to April cards. It also looks like a year for progress, for positive changes. Uh, it's it's good from a from a relationship perspective. We're not seeing relationship drama, um, and a bit of a, an inner uh, work here that is always very valuable. 
So lovely cards and a lovely astro clock, I'd say Libra. I'm certainly looking forward to your comments and your feedback about them. Let me know what your vision for 2023 is. Let me know how the cards resonate with it. I'd love to know. And like I said, stay tuned for the workshop. I'm really excited to, to share more info about this. And as always, Libra, until next time, thank you so much for watching and take very good care of yourself. And before I let you go, I want to remind you to stick with me with the coming forecast. I'm looking forward to those too. So until then, take very good care of yourself.